Welcome to the premiere of this Psalm Library release, Psalm 65, Hope Has an Answer, written by Kip Fox and Reverend Dr. Mike Mittendorf. The Psalm Library is one of the many initiatives of the Center for Worship Leadership, where we equip and encourage songwriters, leaders of worship, preachers, and tech directors with gospel-rooted resources and experiences from the Lutheran theological tradition. The Psalm Library pairs theologians and songwriters to resource the singing of psalms in worship, which connects us to the tradition of the ancient church, but even more importantly, to Christ. We hope you enjoy the presentation of the Theology of Psalm 65, followed by the release of the new song, Hope Has an Answer. On behalf of the Center for Worship Leadership at Concordia University, Irvine, thank you for joining us. Um, Mike, I've got a few questions for you. Uh, You said this psalm breaks into three parts, Psalm 65. Can you sort of take us through those three pieces? Sure. Yeah, I think the the uh, group of psalms, I think 65 to 68, have something to do with uh, processing or gathering for worship at Jerusalem at the temple. So you got in verse 1 a reference to Zion, verse uh, 4, uh, your house, your holy temple. So uh, kind of a cool kind of worship-centered setting for it. Uh, I like in verse 4, it's God who chooses us, God who brings us near or draws us to himself there. Uh, But then the psalm kind of, in Hebrew at least, has kind of an odd beginning. Uh, It talks about silence and then about praise. So there's kind of this anticipation of waiting in silence for the opportunity to praise God. And in the first part, at least, you have this confession of a God. God, you are a God, verse 2, who answers prayer. So there's that confident hope as, as you draw near to his house. Uh, verses 3 and 4, uh, we are overwhelmed by sin. So there's the part about sin removed, and that comes out uh, in your song. But just this kind of God drawing us near to him to where we gather to worship and praise him because we're confident that he draws us to himself and that he does answer our prayers because that's the God he is. That's great. Uh, why don't we get into what happens next? So- yeah, it's cool. So I think verses 5 to 8 are, you're a God who answers us. So you've sort of got this confident looking to God uh, to do his thing, kind of. And then why, why uh, that's, that's a good thing, right? You answer us how? Uh, awesome and righteous deeds. Uh, the God, our Savior. And then I just love how this psalm kind of is all-inclusive. Uh, you had it in verse 2, all people. But then again in verse 5, you're the hope. There uh, sounds like a word we could use in a song title. The hope of all the ends of the earth. So very um, all-inclusive in uh, who this God is, who answers prayers. So there's just the affirmation. You answer us. Uh, You're the hope of all people. And why? You get in verses 6 and 7 very much creation imagery. You're the God who created all things. You're the God who created all people, who gives life to all people. And because of that, uh, you're an awesome, powerful God. Verse 7, the roaring of the seas uh, could uh, likely be a reference to the Exodus, which is the key salvation moment for God's Old Testament people. Uh, and uh, you settle that turmoil of the nation. So that's a relevant uh, thing for these days, too. I think it's Psalm 2, where the nations are gathered against uh, Yahweh and against his anointed one. Uh, And amidst that turmoil of nations, uh, God is one who uh, is just strong, who's life giver, who's life redeemer, and who will do wondrous things for us. And so, yeah, you got the the creation, uh, which then becomes an all-inclusive Uh, application of God. And so there are other psalms like this. Uh, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim his handiwork. Day after day, they pour forth speech that's there for everyone. Um, So I love that uh, part of this psalm. Awesome. Okay. So we've got got two parts out of three. (laughs) Take us home. Yeah. And then I think verses 9 to 13 are something um, we just don't ponder too much that God just didn't, like some deist God, create life and then sit back on a couch. 
the doctrine term is providence, that he continues to provide, care for, sustain his creation. So verses 9 to 13 are just wonderful ways in which God does this. Uh, look at verse, you care for. God continues to care, not just for us, but for the land that you water it, the streams flow, uh, and just kind of this cycle of nature isn't a cycle of nature. It's God's ongoing blessing in and through creation as he provides for us, as he provides for creation. And again, other psalms accent this, Psalm 104, 121, 136, and I like Psalm 145, that just uh, God continues to be active in his creation, and in doing so, he seeks to bless it and us with his ongoing uh, love and concern. God in Zion, you have heard our prayer. Blessed are your peace all you wounded, weary, and alone Look now, our salvation is made known All of the questions are coming an answer the Savior is born through him every mountain finds its peak raging seas fall silent when he speaks all things hold to Savior is born. 